What is going on guys? This is Crozen and welcome back to another Baldur's Gate 3 build. This time we are going to look at my Ancients Paladin tank, control, and off healing build. So it's basically like an all-in-one build here. And with this build, I wanted to have a theme going on here. I wanted like a real sword and board tank and wearing heavy armor. So that's what we're going to have with here. I know we are going to suffer in a little bit of damage since we're not going to be two handing any weapons. However, with this build, you don't really need to focus on damage. That's for the rest of your party. This build is mainly here just for controlling enemies, taunting enemies with compel duel and just basically being a really badass tank and that's what this build accomplishes so with this we are going to go a little bit into sorcerer but it's not going to be that traditional split that you see all the time like going seven paladin or six paladin with five or six sorcerer i think with this one this is going to be pretty unique i know you guys haven't seen this kind of split before so let's get into making the ancients paladin tank so for our starting class and abilities, we are going to select a Paladin and obviously Oath of the Ancients will be our subclass. Now I know I said we are going to be using Sorcerer with this build as well. And if you start with a Sorcerer, you will be able to get that Constitution saving throw proficiency. However, when you multi-class into a Paladin, you won't get heavy armor proficiency. So that's not going to work for us. Not until later on in the game when we can respec and we'll be able to get heavy armor proficiency elsewhere. So for the time being, just start out with Oath of the Ancients. And for our abilities, our main ability here is going to be Charisma. And if you are going to be pursuing the Hag's Hair, then you want to start with 17 Charisma, and that way it'll get you up to 18 once you get the Hag's Hair. It can be a little tricky though, and it's very easy to break your Oath by going for the Hag's Hair. So if that is a problem for you, then you can just start with 16 Charisma and then just go for 12 Wisdom. Um, really, it's not going to make too much of a difference. It's just going to help out your Auras just a little bit more. Our second ability is going to be Strength. You want to make sure you get this up to 16. We're not going to worry about Dexterity. I know that's going to affect our initiative, but we are going to be using other methods to obtain high initiative with this build. 14 constitution is all you need. You don't need any intelligence, just lower that to eight and then just go with a base of 10 wisdom. For the skill proficiencies, I like to go with athletics and persuasion. So now we could go through our level progression up to level 12. And the first step is to unlock the extra attack for a paladin, which comes at level five. So we're gonna go five straight levels into a paladin here. And at level two, we do get our fighting style. Now you do have a couple of options. You know, protection sounds nice because we are a tank. However, I'm not a big fan of this fighting style. I just think that there's better options out there. And then defense is always nice for that extra bonus to our armor class. But we don't want to have a super high armor class with the tank as that's just going to make it harder for the enemies to target you. And they're going to go and target your allies instead. So dueling will work out best here. This is just going to give us a little bit of extra damage every time we attack. And that's always going to be pretty nice. So now we can just keep on progressing into a paladin. And some good early game prepared spells will be command, compel duel, Cure Wounds, Wrathful Smite, Bless, and Thunderous Smite. Command and Compel Duel will be your two most important spells with this build. Uh, this is going to be true later on in the game. You might not use them as much early on, but they will be your two most important spells, and you guys will see once you get into the combat section of this build. But keep on going. Go up to level 4. We get our first feat. And what we want to do with this feat is go ahead and select Sentinel since we are a tank. The main reason we want Sentinel is because we can snare enemies with an opportunity attack so that way they can't get over to our allies. That's really the main purpose of getting Sentinel here and it's going to last you for the entire game and it's really going to give you that tank vibe with this build as well. Now that we're level 5 we get our extra attack and we also gain level 2 paladin spells. Our main spell that we're going to use here will be Misty Step. I wouldn't worry too much about the other level 2 Paladin spells. Most of them just aren't really that good for the purpose that we're trying to serve with this build. 
You could probably make a case for lesser restoration being added for your prepared spells. I wouldn't worry about aid. You probably have a full spell caster that can cast this to a higher upcasting, and that's going to be better than a paladin version. But yeah, just stick with the level 1 spells. Now that we're midway through our build, before we go further into a paladin in order to get the Aras, we want a multi-class into a sorcerer, as around this time you should be nearing Act 2, so you should get a very important item that we're going to use, which will be Helmet of Arcane Acuity. So go ahead, multi-class into a sorcerer for the four cantrips. You could select the offensive elemental cantrips here, and you could also go for the friends cantrip. Just remember to always leave the area after you cast that. And then for the spells, I would say Magic Missile and Shield will be the two best spells here for the Sorcerer. And then go for the Draconic Bloodline and then go for the White Cold Ancestry. This way you will unlock Armor of Agathis and that way it'll just give you another little tankier spell that you have in your arsenal. So now what we want to do is put one more level into a sorcerer to unlock meta magic, as meta magic will pair up really nicely with two of our paladin spells, which are command and compelled duel. So for the additional sorcerer spell, you could select anything you want here. It's really not going to make too much of a difference. I just pick thunder wave. And for the class passives, make sure that you select extended and twin spell for the meta magic. So now what we want to do is head back over to a Paladin and start getting our Aras. So go ahead, level up at level 8 in Paladin level 6. This will get you Aura of Protection. And at level 9, you will get Aura of Warding at Paladin level 7. So go ahead and pick those up. And then at level 10, you will get your second feat. What I recommend doing with this feat is going for Savage Attacker. Savage Attacker is just too good to pass up if you are playing a Paladin. Even if we are not a primary damage dealer, I think that it's just too valuable not to get Savage Attacker here, especially since it's going to really make those Divine Smites add up in damage. Your other option would be to go for Ability Improvement if you want more Strength or Charisma. I do expect you guys to get the Potion of Everlasting Vigor in Act 2. That will permanently get your strength up to 18 with this build, and that's more than enough. So I would just recommend going with Savage Attacker here. So now that we're level 11, we get level 3 Paladin spells, and that was really one of the goals that I had in mind when I created this build. I wanted to make sure that we were able to get Warden of Vitality, as this is a really good healing spell that only requires a bonus action, and you can use it in or out of combat. We also will have access to Plant Growth, which is a really good spell for slowing enemies down. So for a final look at our prepared spells, uh, it'll look something like this. As you guys can see, we still have a lot of level 1 spells active here, as those are mainly the best Paladin spells. So for some level 3 spells, we could add Remove Curse, Warden of Vitality, Blinding Smite, and Revivify. So now that we're level 12, the core of our build is already done, so this last level is really personal preference. So you could go for another level in a Paladin in order to get Aura of Courage, you could go back into a Sorcerer for another Sorcery Point and another Meta Magic, or you could go for what I do and I go for a Life Cleric. Life Cleric will give us a couple of things here. For one, we will get Heavy Armor Proficiency whenever we multiclass into a Life Cleric. So what this means is that we can respec our character at level 12, we can start with a Sorcerer in order to get the Constitution Saving Throw Proficiency, and still have our heavy armor proficiency this way. The second reason is we get Disciple of Life. So what this will do is every time we use our Warden of Vitality, we will heal for an additional five hit points. So it's a nice little bonus that you can have at level 12. So for the cantrips, I recommend going with Thaumaturgy. You could also go for Guidance here and Produce Flame. And then for the Deity, you can do whatever you want here. I go for Tempest. And the main thing here for our prepared spell will be Sanctuary. Sanctuary will be really good. It's only a bonus action. And we can basically protect our ally from any harm by doing this. 
Next up is our gear setup, and the most important item for our build will be Helmet of Arcane Acuity, as every time we attack with our weapon, we will gain Arcane Acuity stacks, which means that we have a better success rate of getting Compelled Duel or Command to work on our enemies. And when you combine that with Meta Magic, you can get some really powerful results, as you guys will see in the Combat Showcase. We're going to go with Cloak of Displacement, so that way enemies have disadvantage on attack rolls that target you. This works really well when you have a tank that doesn't have an enormously high armor class, such as our character here. We're going to go with the Adamantine Splint Armor, so that way attackers can't land critical hits. The Reviving Hands, so this way we get a Blade Ward effect every time we are healed, or our allies will get Blade Ward every time they are healed. We're also going to go with Boots of Persistence for Freedom of Movement and the Dexterity Saving Throw. For our amulet, we're going to go with the Amulet of Greater Health. This will give us advantage on constitution saving throws, but we're also going to have a lot of HP, which is going to make us feel like a tank. For our rings, we're going to go with the Whispering Promise Ring and Ring of Regeneration. So the Whispering Promise is going to work just like the Reviving Hands. So anytime we are healed, we are going to get a Bless for two turns, or anytime our allies are healed, they are going to get a Bless. And Ring of Regeneration is just going to give us a little bit of HP each turn. But more importantly, it's going to activate the Reviving Hands and the Whispering Promise. And we do not have to use a healing spell on ourselves in order to get those to activate. So it uh, gives us some really powerful buffs and it's a really powerful combination when you use all three of them on your character. So for the weapon, we're going to go with the Devotee's Mace, which you get once you hit level 10 and you use Divine Intervention on a Cleric. I feel like this is the best weapon for this build. It's a plus 3 weapon enchantment. It has decent damage and more importantly it has a really good ability which is a bonus action in Healing Incense Aura. Which means that we have another AoE healing spell and that's going to work really well with the Reviving Hands and the Whispering Promise Ring. If you want a good early game weapon you're probably going to be using Blood of Lathander for most of the game until you hit level 10. And in Act 3, you could also go for the Sacred Star if you want a different alternative to the Devotee's Mace. And for our shield, we're going to go with the Sentinel Shield. We really do need the Sentinel Shield, so make sure that you guys pick this up in Act 2. Uh, this is really important because we don't have any dexterity, so we really need that plus 3 bonus to initiative rolls. And same thing applies for the Hell Rider Longbow, which you get in Act 3. This will also give you a plus 3 bonus to initiative rolls, and we really do need that. So if you want a good bow that you can get in Act 1, you could go for Bow of Awareness. This will give you a little bit of initiative early on. But yeah, other than that, that is how we are going to gear our character. So now we could take a deeper look at the combat featuring the Ancient's Pally tank. And what I would recommend you guys to do is prior to a big fight, use Warden of Vitality. That way you'll have it here as a bonus action for 10 straight turns that you can use on any of your allies to grant them the buff. And the good news is the recent patch made it to where you can actually shield bash and knock enemies prone when they attack you now. So that's another good thing about being a sword and board paladin here. So what I would recommend you guys to do is if you have another character that can cast haste on your paladin, I'd recommend you guys to go ahead and do that because um, that's going to give you other options for different types of actions, whether you want to use command or you want to use plant growth, not necessarily for getting you know, for attacks, but for a bunch of other different purposes that you can do here as well. So uh, after that, your main goal is to basically focus on getting as many arcane acuity stacks as you can. So that way you could get a perfect compelled duel or a command. So that's what we're going to do now. So I'm just going to go ahead and start attacking. And you want to use probably your first two divine smites because this will also give you more arcane acuity stacks so we'll go ahead and use that and then i'll go over here and i'll use another one and at this point you have a couple of options you could either use a command and you would go for the command grovel or you can go for a compelled duel here or you can use plant growth i mean there's so many different options 
Um, you could even use Thunderous Smite if you wanted a little bit of extra damage. Um, what I'm going to do here is save my bonus action. I'm just going to keep on attacking um, just to get some other enemies out of the way here. And we'll go ahead and do one more attack. I'll use a level 3 Divine Smite. Ideally, you don't want to keep wasting your Divine Smites like this. I'm only doing this for the purpose of this video, um, just so that this fight goes by a little quicker. Um, but really, you want to just save those Divine Smites for criticals and only use them at the beginning of the fight in order to build up a lot of Arcane Acuity stacks. So at this point, now with our bonus action, we can use our Taunt, our Compelled Duel. So what you want to do for that is use the Meta Magic Twin spell. Um, that way you can target two enemies with this rather than one. So I'll go ahead and just target this melee enemy. And I'll target this archer over here so that way he's not laying fire on my allies. And then I will keep my paladin right here in the center. So that way when this enemy attacks me I could either get a shield bash or if this enemy tries to run away... I can hit them with a Sentinel Snare. So now we're in turn 2 and a couple of our allies took a little bit of damage so now would be a good time to do an AoE healing spell as a bonus action. But prior to that I'm going to go ahead and deal a little bit of damage on these enemies here. I'll probably do one more attack, that way we can use a Command Grovel, I could showcase that as well. So now I'm going to head over here. Um, I want to try to get close to this enemy in case they attack one of my allies, I could retaliate with Sentinel. And for the healing options, you really have four main healing spells with this build. You can either use Healing Radiance as a bonus action, Healing Incense Aura if you have the Devotee's Mace, you also can use Restore Vitality as a bonus action if you cast Warden of Vitality prior to a fight. And then you also have Lay of Hands and you've got four charges of that that you can use as an action. So you have a lot of good healing on this build and you also have decent damage and full control. So this build really covers a lot of areas for a very nice and complete build. So what I'm going to do here is just use Healing Radiance. Um, that way all of my party here gets Bless and Blade Ward, and they regenerate a little bit of HP. And then we're going to use a Command Grovel. So uh, Command Grovel is really nice, but what makes it so good is whenever you use it with Meta Magic. So you always want to make sure you use it with the extended spell. And what this will do is it will basically shut enemies down for two turns, and they cannot do anything. And so if you use this as an upcast you're able to even hit another target on top of that. So um, what I'm going to do here is just use it as a level 2 spell. And we could go ahead and just shut down both of these archers. And so now we're in turn 3 and all that's left is just to take out the remaining enemies. So I hope you guys enjoyed my Ancients Paladin tank control and support off healing build. Basically it covers everything with this build. Um, you have decent damage, not amazing damage, but decent. And you could basically control the whole battlefield with this build. And you just have good off healing, good buffs, um, good auras to protect your party. And it's just a really good solid build, especially for a main character. So hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, let me know what you think about it in the comments and give me some other recommendations for builds that you want to see. And I will see you in the next video.